Hi, this is Nick from Tilta. Today we're going to take a look at how to set up and operate the Hydra motorized slider and shock absorbing arm. This system is compatible with the majority of vehicles, but is not fully compatible with all vehicles. As the manufacturing of many vehicles differ, it cannot be guaranteed that the roof and frame will not be damaged, permanently marked, or dented. Such risks are possible. The system packs up into three cases. Box 1 includes two slider connection plates, an extension bracket, two rosette speed rail mounts, the control module, two backplate speed rail mounts, one center backplate speed rail mount, a control handle with mounting bracket, and two sections of the slider. Box 2 includes two speed rail sets, a tow hitch adapter, five speed rail mounting clamps, three power cables, a front tow hook adapter, a tool set, and five speed rail mounting suction cups. Box 3 includes a shock absorbing arm, a speed rail mounting adapter, a two axis dampening bracket, a shock absorbing head, the motorized slider mounting plate, and a 90 degree extension bracket. We will now show you how to install the Hydra motorized slider and shock absorbing arm in the following quick start guide. We recommend at least two people for installation. You can mount the slider vertically on the front or back of your vehicle. You can also mount the slider horizontally on top of your vehicle. Now we will demonstrate how to mount the slider vertically in front of the vehicle. Remove the slider from the case. It will come in two parts with the rubber belt already installed. Lay the two halves flat on the ground, making sure the quick release plate rests on top. Next, we'll connect the two sections of the slider by using the two side connection plates and securing them in place with a couple of screws. Keep in mind, you may need to use a mallet to perfectly get this plate in position. You can then connect the loose ends of the belt to the quick release plate like so. At both ends of the slider, attach the speed rail mounts. Remember the top of the slider is the part with the ports. At the bottom of the slider, install the speed rail mount along the Z axis. This will mount to the tow hook adapter once we extend the speed rail. To mount the slider vertically to the back of a vehicle with a tow hitch, you will need to install the tow hitch adapter. First, we will need to install a tow hook, which you can find on most SUVs, and then we can install our tow hook adapter. Make sure the tow hook is firmly attached to the vehicle and that the ring is horizontal to the ground. Place the ring of the tow hook inside the tow hook adapter, like so, and fasten the bolts tightly. If more clearance is needed between the screws, adjust the bottom bolt.
screw on a small speed rail to the tow hook adapter. Now lift the slider with two people and mount the slider onto the speed rail via the speed rail mount on the bottom. Place the slider in its vertical position and tighten down the speed rail mount. Before moving on further, you'll want to make sure that you have someone keep a hand on the slider until it is further secured. You can then begin screwing together the speed rail pieces. At one end, attach a suction cup. At the other, attach a mounting clamp. Keep in mind this will vary depending on the vehicle you are using. Do this for two pieces, then attach the mounting clamp to the middle portion of the slider where the speed rail is extruding. Suction cup the speed rail to the hood of the car in a triangular formation. You can then begin to assemble longer pieces of speed rail. At one end, attach a suction cup. At the other end, attach a mounting clamp. Keep in mind, for certain vehicles, you may need to use additional speed rail. Do this for two pieces, then attach the mounting clamps to the top portion of the slider where the speed rail is extruding. Suction cup the speed rail to the roof of the car in a triangular formation. You can then assemble the final piece of speed rail and connect a mounting clamp to one end and a suction cup to the other. Next, we're going to take a look at how to build the shock absorbing arm. To start, install the motorized slider mounting plate followed by the shock absorbing arm. You can then install the 90 degree extension bracket, followed by the two axis dampening bracket. You'll first need to remove the locking washer from the dampening bracket and then re-secure it once it is connected to the extension bracket. You can use the same process to connect the shock absorbing head. You can then attach your gimbal and camera package via the included Ronin 2 mount. We recommend tightening everything with an Allen key after assembly. Dampening settings will depend on the condition of the road, the suspension of the vehicle, as well as the weight mounted to the arm itself. We recommend experimenting with the dampening settings on both the two-axis dampening module and the arm itself. The goal is to have the gimbal return to center in a single motion during free fall without oscillating back and forth. Next, you can connect the three cables to the slider. Wrap the cables along the speed rail structure neatly. Connect the ends of the cables to the control box.
connect the batteries to the control box. Flip the switch on the control box to the on position, then press the power button and twist the emergency stop button. Connect the hand controller to the control box. You can set A and B marks on the controller by pressing the Cal button for your A position as well as your B position. In order to adjust the speed of the slider, you have two options. One is displayed on the control box, and the other is displayed on the handle. You can press the menu button on the control box and navigate to the speed submenu to select between high, medium, and low. You can also use the dial on the side of the handle to further adjust the speed. The dampening of the slider is displayed on the control box and can be adjusted through the menu in the dampening submenu. The lower the dampening, the slower the slider will come to a stop. Higher dampening will cause the slider to stop faster. Now we will demonstrate how to mount the slider horizontally to the top of the vehicle. This mode is useful for live broadcasting, such as marathons or cycling races. You can then attach the shock absorbing head via the shock absorbing head mounting plate to the quick release plate of the slider. Please note this mounting plate is not included with the base package. With the slider already connected, install the back plate speed rail mounts to the top and bottom of the slider with small pieces of speed rail protruding. On all four of the speed rail ends, add a suction cup. The back two may need another piece of speed rail and mounting clamps to be used at an angle in order to mount to the back windshield. Adjust the suction cups to level the slider accordingly. Again, the make and model of the vehicle being used will determine the configuration of this build. You can then attach your gimbal and camera package. Next, you can connect the three cables to the slider and wrap them neatly along the speed rail structure before connecting the ends of the cables to the control box. You can then connect batteries to the control box, power on the system, and connect the hand controller. You can then operate the system the same that you could when vertically mounted. This was a quick start guide on how to install and use the Hydra motorized slider. I'm Nick from Tilta. Thanks for watching.